Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, uh, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Well, from the Nebraska Library Commission. <laughs> um, Encompass Live is the Commission's a weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today, and you can watch it later at your convenience. Um, and I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our archived recordings. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share uh, with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. Uh, at the Nebraska Library Commission, we are the state agency for libraries in Nebraska. So we have shows that would be for all types of libraries. We provide services in, um, to all types of libraries in the state. So uh, for public, academic, K-12, museums, corrections, um, archives, historical societies, anything that's got a library is really our only uh, criteria. Um, we have book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products. We bring in guest speakers from across Nebraska and across the country sometimes. Um, and we have a Nebraska Library Commission staff do presentations for us for things that are um, Nebraska Library Commission specific, and that's what we have today. Uh, today with us is uh, Deborah Dracos and Alana Novotny and Susan Nisley, who are all from our Technology and Access Services Department here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. And they are going to tell us about all the new things happening with Nebraska Access. Um, so I will just hand it over to uh, you to explain what's going on and. and reintroduce what we're doing here. Okay, thanks Krista. And we're glad everybody's here with us this morning. Um, and we're going to be talking about working with our new Nebraska Access website. So I am, as Krista said, Deborah Dragos, and I'm the Director of Technology and Access Services here at the Library Commission. Susan Nisley is our online services librarian, and she provides training, documentation, and support for Nebraska Access, among many other things. <laughs> um, Elena Novotny is our technology and access services librarian, and in addition to also helping with the training and documentation for Nebraska Access, she's our main tech person. So if you have access questions, Elena is the first person to ask for help. <laughs> So, our new Nebraska Access site. Because we added a new statewide database subscriptions this fiscal year, and we now have enough content to address different levels of audiences, we decided it was time to just totally revamp our uh, complete Nebraska Access website and to add access pages to help direct users to the most useful resources. So on our main Nebraska Access page, um, just as a reminder, Nebraska Access was originally designed to be our portal to resources for the public's use. Not Librarians, of course, can use these resources, but this was our main way to reach out to the public and say, okay, here are the things that are for you, and here's an easy way to access them. So you'll notice um, the main page is redesigned. We have links to the four main resources that we want to highlight for people's use. Of course, we have the statewide databases uh, available through the Databases for Nebraskans link. We have our websites selected by librarians, Nebraska Memories, and our state publications that are online. And I'm just going to highlight the websites selected by librarians first. Because if you remember the old website, all the categories were listed right there up front and center. Those are all now on a separate page. So you notice we basically have the same categories. Uh, looks just a little bit different, but these are sites, pages 
that have been either created or selected by our reference staff to point people to good resources on Nebraska-related topics. So, for example, if you clicked on books and writing, it would take you into um, a list of uh, sites, pages that are related to Nebraska and books and writing. So, for example, you can find bookstores in Nebraska, you can find book club resources, you can find um, movies based on books by Nebraska authors, a, a wide variety of information. Okay. You'll also notice that at the top of each of the pages, there is a search box. Now, this search box is limited to the resources within the websites that have been selected. It does not search the databases. It does not search Google. Okay. So say you have a student who wants to know what the state symbols of Nebraska are. They could just come in here and type in state symbols and they would get several results. The top one is the best one. Our librarians have put together pages for frequently asked or frequently frequently asked questions, FAQs. <laughs> okay. Um, this is a very uh, frequently asked question. So they put a page together that simply lists all of the different state symbols for Nebraska. Okay. Um, if somebody wants to know the um, I'll go back to our websites page. If somebody wanted to know the uh, property value, the taxes on a piece of property out in, say, Cherry County, they could type in property value, value or values. There's a link to where can I look up properties, Nebraska property values, and you'll see again our reference staff have put together a list of links to all of the um, tax assessors websites in every single county across Nebraska. Okay, so that's the type of information you can find in the websites page. And I'll go back to the main page. Okay, so databases for Nebraskans is probably where some of the biggest changes have been made. <clears throat> um, You'll notice that we do have three database access pages now, okay? We wanted to be able to help direct users to the best research resources for their needs, okay? Each of these access pages does have a separate password, so each library has received three different passwords. We just as a reminder, we do ask that you do not post any of those passwords to a publicly publicly accessible web page. Okay. If you accidentally do, <laughs> uh, we will be sending you new passwords to replace the ones that you currently have. Okay. From this page, a patron can start out just by simply entering a password, and that will take them to the page that is directly linked to that particular password or they can choose one of the three access pages okay so can we're I just going yes can i mention that you while we don't state it there you can't enter your driver's license yet also oh yeah we're well, gonna yes and okay. we'll point that out later too yeah okay um so we'll start on the elementary middle school databases page now, one thing I did want to note on this page is that most of the databases, most of the EBSCO databases on this page are curated versions of the databases. For curation, EBSCO has used proprietary processes and tools to ensure that content is relevant and the best fit for the students, which means that content from within some publications has been withheld. Okay, but no system is perfect. So if there are any concerns ever raised about any particular articles, we do ask that you please let us know. Okay, so 
Alana is going to talk about the new content on this page and some of the other options. And I just want to mention, I'm, I, I can start to hear the construction noise, so. Oh, sorry. Oh, hold my back in a little closer or block it. <laughs> yeah. um, I want to talk today about uh, the Middle Search Plus and Explorer for Elementary Schools. And I'm going to be telling Deborah where to drive and click, so please uh, bear with us as I, one of us is backseat driving, I'm not sure who. Uh, Middle Search Plus is one of the new databases that we have added to the collection, and Deborah's kind of highlighting it there. And you'll notice on all of the different databases we have listed on the screen here, you'll see there is a question mark in a colored box that is follow, following the description of the database. So if you click on that, you'll be taken to the About page for the corresponding database. And here's where you, find, where you will find information about that particular database. And I will have to confess right now, the two new databases for like the Middle Search Plus one, uh, this page is pretty slim yet on information. Uh, I don't know about Susan, but my goal is to get some more information on these pages. We just haven't had time yet. So we haven't uh, made any new content for them, but it is on my to-do list. Uh, as for Middle Search Plus, hey, go back, Deborah. Oh. Sorry, I was getting ahead of myself. <laughs> well, you're getting ahead of me at least. <laughs> I just wanted to point out here under contents, as you can see, um, this particular uh, database has 175 magazines that are designed for middle school students. Uh, there's also 55,000 full text primary source documents. And while I don't want Deborah to click on these links, I do want to point out here we do have links to the title lists available. So I always recommend when the first time you encounter a new database, you do take the time to browse and see what magazines are available. So take a look at the Excel or HTML list. And the best way to figure out what's in the database is just to look to see what content's in there. Um, there are things such as US News and World Report, Time Magazine, Sports Illustrated, there are a number of scholastic titles, including a couple that are in French and in uh, Spanish. So that could be useful to certain uh, schools or libraries in the state. And then I also wanted to mention under the other sources, uh, in there, I actually was taking a look at it the other day, and there's over a thousand different biographies in, listed there. So um, if your students have to do reports on different people, um, this is a good source for that type of information. Okay, Deborah, now you can back up. Um, would you just click on the Middle Search Plus link, please? We're not actually going to do any searching today, but I just wanted to show you it is in the EBSCO eHost interface. So you're familiar with this interface already from Master File Primary Search. Um, so it works just like the interface you used in the past. Okay, Deborah, now go back please. And um, the other database listed here that I want to mention is actually is Explora, no clicking it, Deborah, Explora Elementary and Middle School. Um, while I just did call this a database, technically Explora is an interface, not a database. And now if Deborah would click on the little question mark for Explora Elementary Middle Schools. You missed the question mark. Oh, I did. Sorry. The whole box is basically a link. So you have to click really carefully on the whole question mark to get there. Uh, so on this about page for the Explorer Middle Elementary Middle School, you can see here it tells you the contents. Um, and when you search this data, see, I called it a database again. When you search this interface, you are searching actually the Funk and Wagnalls New World Encyclopedia primary search, I'll come back uh, come back to ebooks in a second here, middle search plus, and then topic overviews. Um, well, I won't have Deborah click on the link for the PDF there. Um, with some of these different databases, such as primary search and middle search, we did get a small collection of full text reference books included. 
And so those are included in the Explorer interface. And so when you do a search, those will come up. Um, it's a wide variety of topics. There's about 600 of them in there. I was just skimming the list yesterday. There's some, uh, here's just a few titles I ran across. Stan Lee, How Marvel Changed the World. The Real, Lar the Real Leonardo da Vinci. Um, Trapdoor Spiders and Another other Amazing Predators. <laughs> I'm sure some little boys would like that one. Um, and there's also maker projects for kids who love animation. So it's a wide variety of topics. And then the last thing on the page here is the topic overviews, K5. Um, this is just a collection of resources that are obviously, as the name implies, overviews of different topics, and they are aimed at the K5 audience. And I'll show you an example of those in a minute. So, Deborah, if you would go back, please. And then please go into the database. And this is the new Explore interface. So not only do we have new databases and new layout for Nebraska Access, we also have the new Explorer interface on top of everything. And um, I must admit, I'm still learning this interface. But I just want to just show you a couple things nice about the Explorer interfaces. Um, Deborah, if you scroll down a little, you can see there's Explorer topics. So that way the students don't have to type in a search. They can just click and browse. So please go to Science and Health. And now I have another alphabetical list of additional topics. And let's click on Fossils, please. So at the top of the screen, oh, well, actually about the middle of the screen, you can see, Deborah, can you highlight the topic overviews, please, there? So that is a topic overview that I mentioned. You can see it's from the Salem Press Primary Encyclopedia. Um, if we wanted to read more, we could uh, do that, but that's okay. We won't click on read more right now. Uh, and if you can just scroll down a little bit, please, you can see then the next item is a reference Whoops, she's a little fast. Go up just a tad. There we go. Um, it's a reference entry from Funk and Wagnalls is the next entry on the page. And then the third one on the page is actually a ebook. So these are one of those ebooks that I mentioned. And if you go back towards the top, right into the search box, you can see online full text is listed there. Um, be, by default, the Explorer interface does limit your search results to full text. And the last thing I wanted to point out is if you would click on the all filters, Deborah, please, just to the left. And then over on the right hand side now, you can see you have different filters available. Um, and if you are in a school or library that does work with Lexile ranges, uh, if you can expand the Lexile, Deborah, you can limit your uh, results by a Lexile level. So if you're working with a student and you know what their Lexile reading level is, um, that is a limiter that's available. Um, and there's other limiters here available, but we'll let, let you explore those on your own at another time. So that was just a basic overview of the new uh, Middle Search Plus database and the Explorer for Elementary and Middle Schools. Uh, I will turn it back over to Deborah now to continue, unless Deborah, is there anything I missed? I don't think so. Okay. Oops. <laughs> mm, okay. There we go. So we're going to just click on databases up at the top now, and we will go to the high school databases. And Susan is going to talk about new content and provide an overview here. Okay, um, I'd muted myself because of all of the construction, so hopefully um, that will be uh, not intrusive. Um, MAS Complete is the EBSCO database designed specifically for marketed to high school libraries. Um, so they have developed this database um, 
with the intention of providing content that would be useful um, and that would support high school curriculum and that would be appropriate reading levels for students in high school. They do talk about the fact that they work with education consultants and focus groups. Um, so there's a variety of ways they go about trying to identify content that would be appropriate for this database. Um, and Dever, you don't have to click on the question mark, but this is where you can go to find the sort of thumbnail information that I'm going to give you. Um, the database is uh, provides abstracting and indexing for about 700 uh, magazines or periodicals. Of those, 540 uh, are uh, full text, uh, provide full text content. And if you look at uh, the marketing page that uh, EBSCO's put up about MAS Complete, they say 540 full text popular high school magazines. Well, when I tell you some of the magazine titles, you'll see that not all of them are what we would consider high school magazines, but they are magazines that have been deemed potentially useful for high school students. Um, there are also uh, 55,000 full text primary source documents and um, some associated press videos that will show up in response to searches. So to give you an idea of some of the kinds of content that's included, um, it really does range from general interest publications. So uh, you have Time Magazine, you have Sports Illustrated, you have Newsweek. So you have those general uh, magazines that are going to cover a wide variety of topics, current events, etc. You're also going to have some specialty uh, ma magazines that are aimed at lay people. So Scientific American is an example, maybe History Today. You're also going to have some uh, scholarly peer-reviewed journal content. So you've got American Indian Quarterly, Early American Literature, World Affairs. Those are all peer-reviewed scholarly journals. And you actually have some content that is uh, a little bit lower level. Uh, Cobblestone is an example. So I'm pretty sure it's going to also be included in the Middle Search Plus database that Alana talked about, but they've also included some content like that in MAS Complete. So as you can see, they're trying to hit uh, basically the standard high school uh, student, but they also want some content in there that's going to be uh, available for uh, students that are more advanced. And then they're also going to have some content in there for students that maybe need a little bit lower reading level content and simpler content. So um, there's obviously a range of grades in high school and also a range of student ability. So they're trying to sort of bridge that gap. Um, MAS Complete uses the eHost interface, just like Middle Search Plus, so it's a very familiar interface. Um, there's also, as you can see at the top of this page, an Explorer interface just for high schools. And in this case, um, I'm going to have Dever click on the question mark. Um, we always have to click on the question mark in order to remember all the specific databases that are included in the different Explora interfaces. So for the high school Explora, if you look down the list, you'll see almost all of the databases that are included on the high school page are included in Explora. There are, are a couple that are missing. Uh, Explorer for High School also includes topic overviews, just like the Middle Search Plus, but these topic overviews are written specifically for students in grades 6 through 12. So for example, if you went into Middle Search Plus and did a search for Dust Bowl, the first result you would get in the, um, I'm sorry, in the Explorer for uh, primary and middle search, middle school. Um, you would get a topic overview on the Dust Bowl, but it would be written for K through 5 students. If you were in Explorer for High School and did a search for Dust Bowl, you would get a to topic overview, but it would be written at a slightly higher level, more advanced level. So um, if you want to go ahead and go back to the main database, uh, 
page for high school. Um, just a couple more comments about Explora. Um, one uh, nice thing about Explora, but it's something to keep in mind, uh, when you do a search in Explora, it's going to search across all of those databases that we just looked at when we went to the question mark about page. Um, the default search is going to be limited to full text content, so you're only going to get uh, detailed, you're only going to get records for articles that are available in full text. Um, then if you need to expand that search to all the content in order to get the abstract and index uh, records, uh, you can do that. But that's one thing to keep in mind, you are going to get uh, by default limited to full text. Um, just a reminder of why you might not want to rely 100% on the Explorer interface, even though it does capture a lot of content. Um, if you scroll down the page, you can see all the different databases that are available for high school. Several of those are not included in Explora. Um, one example is My Heritage Library Edition, which is a genealogy database, and it is structured in a way that it's not going to be uh, workable within the Explora interface. Novelist. Uh, Plus is another uh, database that's not going to be included in the Explorer interface. Um, actually, wow, that's noisy. Maybe, I don't know, Deborah, can you put your mute on? I don't know if that's going to help. Um, wow. Yeah, um, yeah, that's coming through the click. Yeah, Deborah, can you mute your microphone? On your on your go to webinar right underneath the orange arrow, I think she, she might. I don't know. I muted my mic otherwise. Um, in any event, um, the other database that uh, I want to mention is Points of View Reference Center. Points of View Reference Center is included in Explore, so when you do a search in Explore, you will pull content from the Points of View Reference Center, but that's a database where the design of the database is such that uh, it is designed specifically uh, for the content. And if you are working with students in speech or debate, for instance, or if you are uh, working with students on writing a persuasive paper, how do you write a persuasive paper on a controversial topic? Um, the database is really designed to support the process of uh, doing that research. And Deborah, if you want to just click on points of view for a second. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. What did you ask me to click on? Points of view reference center. Here we go. And so if you, uh, you'll see there is a search option at the top, but if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see the various categories. You can scroll down in terms of selecting a topic. The database is designed to give you an overview article, a pro article, and a con article on whatever topic. You so that's not something you're going to get. The structure of the Explorer interface isn't going to support that. You're just going to get articles mixed in with um, articles from other databases. So again, Explorer's got some wonderful uh, features and functionality, but there's also times when you're going to want to search the databases directly. Um, oh, the other database that's not included, I think, in uh, Explora is Small Business Reference Center. So again, just be aware that not everything's covered in Explora. Um, that's it for what I had planned. If there's any questions or if you guys think I missed something, just let me know. But yeah, if anybody does have any questions, go ahead and type into the question section of your GoToWebinar interface. I can grab them for you from um, 
read them off from there. I don't see any questions just yet, though. Okay, they're quiet for this for a second, so maybe I should talk fast. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go back to um, databases again, and I'm going to just briefly talk about the All uh, Nebraska Access Databases Access page. So on this page, it is truly all of the statewide databases that we do provide for Nebraskans, and. <clears throat> While there are databases on this page that um, you will see, find on the elementary middle school page and on the high school page, they're aimed at that audience. From this page, they are not curated. So all of the content is there. Sorry, I'm trying to get the microphone to work. I can hardly hear myself sometimes. Okay. As I scroll down, you'll see we have um, the databases that you're used to, our biography databases, legal information reference center, I highly recommend. I've used it myself. You can find legal information from not only Nebraska, but also from all the other states. Um, my heritage was mentioned uh, on one of the, on the other uh, pages. It's very, it's a very useful tool for those people who want to do genealogy or that fourth grader who is, you know, researching their family history or anything like that. Um, so we have uh, all of the variety of databases here. And I'll just talk to it in case anybody's wondering why they're, the boxes are different colors. <laughs> that was just sort of a okay, do we want to be boring or do we want to come up with some kind of a color scheme? The yellow relates to books. The green relates to people. So you'll notice my heritage and the biography databases have a green box around them. The darker blue relates to articles and the lighter blue are the explorers. So that's just a little bit of why there's a, um, why different boxes are different colors for the databases, okay? So beyond the, um, the data, database access pages, um, libraries may choose. I'm just gonna go back to the main databases page. Libraries can choose how they want to direct their patrons to the Nebraska Access Pages. They can point to this main page. They can point to any of the individual pages. They can point to individual databases. It's totally up to them. But we were just trying to find a, an easy way for small libraries especially to point to the, the um, resources that are most appropriate for their particular patrons, okay? Also on this page, we do have a help screen. And from here, this address is not just, um, it addresses both the library staff and the patrons who are using the Nebraska Access database. So as Alana mentioned, we have some Nebraska Access login uh, options help here. So we do talk about the three different passwords that get you into the different sets of databases. And as mentioned, people can still use their driver's license or a state identification number, okay? IP addresses um, can also be used from any, any type of library or your school. We have all, we also have the um, capability to hopefully, <laughs> and Alana might correct me. In a <laughs> number of cases, um, we can set up, for example, a particular school building. If you have an, if you're at an elementary school and you want your students to just when they first log in, just be put immediately into the elementary level databases, we can set your IP addresses up to do that. You can still use, for example, if a teacher needs um, one of the other databases, they need all access, they can still use an all password to override that IP recognition. But the, that way your students don't have to have a password at school. They can just get into the applicable databases. Okay. 
also from the help pages is who to contact with questions. So remember, Nebraska Access is not just simply the databases, it's also the websites recommended by um, our staff, it's Nebraska Memories, the state pubs online. So if the general public do have a question, something in general, <laughs> they can contact our reference staff. Um, it, we do direct people who need access to the databases to contact the local library for a password if necessary. Um, for librarians, we do provide um, links to our email addresses and, and phone numbers there. I want to point out, though, we also have additional information under this librarian's toolbox link. Okay, so from here, this is back on the Nebraska Library Commission website, which is meant for librarians and professional staff more than the general public. We do provide a page that talks about linking and authentication. So we um, provide information about each of the database pages and the links. And then at the very bottom, Alana has come up with different types of scenarios. Say you're a particular type of library and you do have static IPs or you don't have static IPs. You can read through those scenarios, just try to decide which might work best for you. And you can always contact Alana with further questions on how to set your library up in the best way to serve your patrons. Okay. Also from this page, <clears throat> I'll just go down the list <laughs> this way. Um, if you're interested in getting information from us, um, updates about Nebraska Access, you can sign up for our Nebraska Access mailing list if you have not already. You can also find promotional materials from here. So if you're handing out passwords for people to use um, the databases from home, because the databases are the only part you need a password for, um, we do provide templates for business cards. There are a variety of templates there. So depending on the type of library you are or the type of password you're passing out, you have several different options there for creating those business cards. There are also some Nebraska Access logos that you can use on your web page. And then finally here on the page is again another contact us. And here um, we are uh, aiming at specifically at the librarians. So we provide the reference staff um, contact as well as contact information for Alana and Susan and for myself. So if you do have any questions about Nebraska Access, please do let us know. If you have any ideas of how to improve things, please let us know. We, uh, we put things together the best way we thought made sense, but we're open to suggestions. There could be some other possibilities of how we might arrange things. So. This is a test, I guess you could say. We did our best, we put it out there. So now we would appreciate some feedback if you have any. Krista, have any questions come in or comments? Um, okay, um, yes, we do have a question. And if anyone does have any questions, yes, go ahead and type them into your uh, question section of your GoToWebinar interface. Uh, the question is, I'm not, I'll just read this. It says, which database, I think it should be, it says, is which database am I now using for ILL searches? That would still be, let me go back here. That would still be the um, WorldCat database, which is at the very bottom of the all list. Yep, that has not changed, yep. And July Ray Long is still done through OCLC through WorldCat, so yeah. Right. So especially if you're um, placing requests through the Library Commission, I know they do appreciate it if you find it in WorldCat and give them the specific information so that they know exactly what you are asking for. Right. So you get the right the right title that you need. Yeah. 
Susan Alana, did you have anything else to add that I might have forgotten <laughs> in my speed talking? So, any other comments or questions, Krista? Uh, nothing that I've seen come in. Um, anybody have any other uh, questions? Go ahead and um, ask them of uh, uh, Deborah, Susan, or Alana about anything that they've shown you today, any databases you want to know more about, um, anything that you're confused about, or um, unsure where something is now. Um, I think it's a, I like the reorganization definitely. It was always so much all at once. And I like that you've got like the pages. It's like, if you're actually in this kind of situation, go here for what you really need. Um, Cause it, I mean, we offer a lot, which is great, <laughs> uh, but it can be a little overwhelming when there's just so many. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and we rewrote most of the descriptions for the databases too to try to give you a little bit better idea of what it contains or what you can do with it. So, yeah, um, do you have a question about um, the a couple of things here? The uh, title lists. Some of the databases have for the articles, and they give the titles of the journals. Uh, is there, and I don't know if one big list of everything or like a everything that we have in one gigantic list or do you go to each database and see what their specific titles are you have to go to each database to see okay. what titles are available in that particular database we have not compiled all of the different lists from all the different databases is that um, even something that could be done i mean because we've got things coming from so many different places i, don't, I well, wonder if it's possible <laughs> can we address that one the downside of doing that is what we're actually doing is linking out to the list that EBSCO provides. So they're updated continuously by EBSCO. If we were trying to ever combine them into one, um, then we would lose that um, automatic updating. It would have to turn to a manual process and then we'd always be behind. So it's much so, better to have them separated out and to get, get yeah, have, separate they, and have them automatically updated. Well. Absolutely, that totally makes sense. I get it. Um, oh, it, uh, the person asked about ILL. Can, um, okay, wait, here we go here again. Um, oh, okay, a uh, question about the passwords. Are we allowed to leave these passwords with the elementary or high school media specialist? Don't they get sent one? I don't know. <laughs> Um, we, yeah, passwords are sent to the director of every library that we have on record that is signed up for Nebraska Access. And that includes schools, public libraries, academic libraries, some special, special. libraries. Mm -hmm. They would have already been sent it themselves. You're at the public library, you're not responsible for getting that to the school. Right. We'll we do that, yeah. Right. Yeah, Alana sends out passwords to what a little over a thousand different directors. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and that's one of the other things as far as passwords go. We used to change passwords twice a year, and now it's just once a year. And it will it's off will be August first from now on. Oh. So no more changing passwords in the middle of the school year. Yay. <laughs> Um, oh, uh, the question about the ILL. She wants to show you, can you show again how, from like from the main and like when you first get in Nebraska Access, how did you get to WorldCat? Okay, so if you're coming in through the main Nebraska Access page, you go to the databases for Nebraskans, then you go to the all Nebraska Access databases, and then because Atlanta wanted to be alphabetical on this page, all the way at the bottom. Okay. Looks good. All right. All right. Any other questions anybody has? Anything other databases you want to see? Uh, anything, else, anything else you want to know? You all do know how to get in touch with Denver Atlanta, or um, as you said, through the help on the Nebraska Access website. If you do have any um, questions, issues, concerns, anything that's going on with it.
going to wait and see if anybody does type anything. And I can't see when you're typing. I have to wait for the message to come up. So if there's anything coming in. Um, anything and, last? Go ahead. Well, this was basically a very quick overview. And we may have some new staff out there who are not familiar with um, using Nebraska at, or oh, searching oh, specific databases. Yeah. So we're willing to do training, or I will volunteer, <laughs> Susan Malata, uh, to do training. Uh, so just let us know, you know, and we could work with systems, or we can, you know, come on to the individual area and do some training. All right. You were saying you can work with the systems too to come bring something to the different areas in the state right. too. Yeah. Well, I don't see any other uh, less any other questions that came in. Um, so I think we may have uh, answered everything. I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, any uh, last words, final words you want to share about uh, about Nebraska Access, Susan, Elena, or Deb, Deborah, to wrap up? Yeah. Um, please do use it. <laughs> um, recommend it to your to your uh, patrons. Try it out yourselves, though, just so that you're familiar with the different content that's there. That will really help you promote it to the um, to your users. Um, one, I guess, I'll throw this in um, as a final comment. For the new content that's there this year, the um, Middle Search Plus and the MAS Complete, we did sort of repurpose some funding to pay for that for this year. We have put the funds in for um, our next budget request. So we're crossing our fingers that we can continue all of the different databases, database subscriptions in the future. Yeah, and definitely having the showing, having the use and statistics that showing their use, that helps us to keep right. advocating for that funding and showing the legislature yes this is we need to keep funding it because people and our citizens are using it yeah right google is great to find out where you know maybe the best restaurant is in a town that you're visiting but if you want need to do real research <laughs> authoritative research we recommend the databases absolutely awesome all right well thank you very much then this was great um glad to see the new interface i know it's been up for a little bit now um and the new the new nebraska access and hopefully this will get even more uh, libraries using it more more people all across the state using it the new setup so i think that will wrap it up for today's show thank you everybody thank you everybody for being here i am going to pull back presenter control to my screen now <laughs> There it goes. Waiting for it to switch. There we go. <laughs> and uh, so that will wrap it up for today's show. And I said, um, this is our main Encompass Live page. Uh, if you just use your search engine of choice, speaking of Google, as Deborah did, and type in Encompass Live, we're the only thing on the internet called this, and nobody else is allowed to use the name. You will get our page here. Um, this is our upcoming shows, but I did want to show you where our archives are. There, there's a link right here underneath the upcoming shows for archived Encompass Live shows most recent ones at the top of the list so um today's will be here uh should be done and uploaded by the end of the day tomorrow um i got um, as long as uh go to webinar and youtube uh, cooperate with me there will be a link to the recording and everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know when it is available um, and you can watch it and share spread the word about new Nebraska access. Uh, while we're here, I'll just show you there is a search feature for our archives. If you want to look and see if there is anything, um, have we, if we've done a show on any topic you may be interested in or looking for, go ahead and use that. You can search just the most recent 12 months or um, all the show archives. And that is because this is our full archives. And I'm not going to scroll all the way down because it's huge. Uh, going back to when Encompass Live. January 2009. 
So um, just pay attention to the original broadcast date of any show. Uh, some of the shows will be um, good to still watch. They'll stand the test of the time, still be good, useful information. But some things will become old or outdated. Information will become... Um, will change. Uh, some services or programs we no longer exist anymore have changed drastically. Links to different things might, not, you know, might be broken. So just pay attention to that date if you are watching any of our archives. Um, in addition to emailing everyone about our when the recording is available, we do have a Facebook page for Encompass Live and we do post out on social media, uh, Twitter, Instagram. So if you like to use Facebook, give us a like over there um, and you'll see here's a reminder about today's show. Um, where's the last one? We didn't do a show last week at our state conference, but before that we had a recording, reminder about the recording, so um, you can look at that. Um, and we always use the hashtag EncompLive anywhere we post. So if you look on Twitter for that hashtag, you'll find our posts there as well. So that is it for today's show. Um, I've got our October show scheduled, getting starting to get November dates on here. So keep an eye on our schedule. Um, I'm working with confirming some other sessions. So um, you'll see more of them get added. Uh, next week, we will be doing another uh, session with Nebraska Library Commission staff. My department, Library Development, will be talking about our grants for uh, the next year. Grants, the Nebraska Library Commission grants will be available for 2023. These are grants for um, Nebraska libraries. Um, we will be making all of our grants available, library improvement, youth, internship, and CE and training. The grants actually opened up for applications last month, and they are all due December 16th, all of the grants. But we'll have a webinar next week that we'll talk about um, all the details and the application process and anything. So if you're interested in applying for any of our grants, definitely sign up for that show. Other than that, that wraps up for today's show. Thank you, everyone. Oh, we have some thank yous coming in. Thank you coming in to you all. Uh, thank you for the information, all your work creating this at the, at the new Nebraska Access. Thanks, Krista. Yeah, all right. Thank you. And we'll see you on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye. Bye.